The human race is dependent on both wild and domestic bee populations to pollinate our ever-expanding, intensively grown crops. We have become used to having a wide range of cheap fruit and vegetables, but without bees, a large proportion of our foods will be lost. Foods like apples, tomatoes, pears, strawberries and onions are just a few of the English growing products at risk. On a worldwide scale, there are many other potential losses. Cocoa beans and vanilla pods are among those at risk. Additionally, the lack of bees could force us into pollinating our own crops by hand. Bees are on the decline for a number of reasons, with the leading being habitat loss. This is thought to be because of the lack of flora and resources from using more intensive agricultural techniques. After World War II, there are major changes in farming. Cheap fertilisers were developed and untouched grassland, which was previously left for grazing and hay production, was being ploughed for new fast-growing grass varieties. Grants were also introduced to remove hedgerows, reseed pastures and drain marshy areas, so land which was previously left was being cultivated, resulting in the loss of natural habitat for the bees. Recently, steams have been introduced to make sure some farmland is left for local wildlife. Field margins and hedgerows can be vital for the bees by supplying them with needed resources. However, there has to be a sufficient number of plants, otherwise the bees won't have enough food and may starve and die. This isn't just a problem for the farmers, it's a problem for all of us. As the human population increases, we are destroying more natural habitat, leaving the bees with less food and less sites, and without these, their numbers are dwindling. Bees do better in urban situations, in, in cities and towns, because there are lots and lots of flowering trees and that's where they uh, odd flowers they get their day-to-day -day living but to actually get enough honey to store to overwinter that mm -hmm. they um, re really need lots and lots of trees. Fortunately there are several easy ways you can help honeybees collect enough nectar to last them all year. You may consider providing honeybees with forage in the form of flowering plants either a whole garden full, a large pot on the patio or a tray on the windowsill. Every little helps. It is important to understand that some plants known to be attractive to bees are not accessible to honeybees due to the length of their tongue. Bees collect nectar by injecting their tongue into the stool, expanding the hairs along the length and pulling it back into their mouth. Compared to bumblebees, the honeybee's tongue is quite short, so flowers such as foxgloves and morning glory are perfect for bumblebees but have little to offer honeybees. Despite this, there are still literally hundreds of plant species cheaply available with flat open flowers perfect for honeybees, such as low maintenance hebees and anemones, cherry, hornthorn, salix, as well as lavender, sage and geraniums, which are happy to be grown in smaller pots. If you have slightly more room, a common lime or linden tree would be incredibly beneficial in terms of volume of nectar produced, longevity of the supply and ease of access for the honeybees. If you don't have any outside space, convincing friends or family to plant bee-friendly gardens would be just as helpful. You can also get in touch with your local council by writing letters and emails or through social media. If you know of any ongoing or upcoming developments in your area, try and suggest the addition of cheap nectar-rich villas such as hardy white clover that can easily be planted in grass verges or greens. I think we've got to get uh, more trees planted, more land actually uh, set aside for uh, wildflowers and... The future is in our hands. We have the power to decide if we want to take the next step towards stabilising our bee populations. In parts of China, the system has already collapsed, leading to farmers hand-pollinating plants in a costly, ineffective and hugely time-consuming method of literally using paintbrushes to put pollen on each individual flower. This is not sustainable and will lead to severe food shortages and loss of biodiversity if it were to happen worldwide. Alternatively, we could follow the actions already being used elsewhere in the UK. Marks and Spencer have helped positively impact their local environment with their Plan A project. Not only has this project helped bee populations, but it also improved morale of employees. Many organisations are gradually stepping up to help, but now it's your turn. What's the now side? It's our choice. Every individual helps, even a small action. 
Remember, trees for bees. Oh, what a glorious thing to be, a healthy, grown-up, busy, busy bee, whiling away the passing hours, pinching all the pollen from the coffee flowers. I'd like to be a busy, busy bee, being just as busy as a bee can be, flying round the garden, the sweetest ever seen, taking back the honey to the dear old queen. Bzz, bzz, bzz.